All right, let's dive into this. Today we're looking at generative AI, and we've got some really interesting stuff to unpack. We've got slides from a tech talk, doozy, some AI design. So are we going to try to figure out just how big generative AI already is? Well, yeah. And what I think is really interesting is this doozy talk. They get right into it. They've got this slide, right? It lists all these companies, National Grid, Coca-Cola, Durex, even Papa John's. You don't see that lineup every day. Definitely not. It really makes you think this isn't some far off thing. It's happening now and it's everywhere. I know. It makes you wonder what each of those companies is doing with AI. It's like, yeah. are they changing how they work, making something new? So much is possible. And speaking of possibilities, those chair designs you sent over, those are something else. Like something out of a movie, right? Yeah. But how does AI even design a chair? It's not like it can pick up a sketch pad. Well, it starts with data. They used a neural network for those chairs. Basically, it's AI that learns from tons of data. They probably fed it a massive amount of chair designs, probably thousands. So it's like learning what a chair is through all those designs. Right, exactly. It sees what shapes work, how to yeah. make something sturdy, and then it comes up with something new, something that's still a chair, but different. That's wild, like teaching a computer to speak chair. Yeah. But it's not just the AI, right? Yeah. The slides show designers taking those AI ideas and refining them, making them actually work. Definitely, and that's super important. AI on its own, it's a tool. It needs that human touch, a human eye to say, this is cool, but also this actually makes sense. A super powered brainstorming buddy yeah. throws out a million ideas yeah. and get to pick the best ones. And you know those other chair designs we were talking about, like that white one, the wood and metal one, that shows how AI can come up with so many options and so quickly. It could change how we design yeah. everything. Not just chairs, but the whole design process. But okay, got to ask about those avocado chairs. Creative? Sure. Practical. I, I don't know about that. Yeah, those are interesting. AI is amazing, but it doesn't always get what works for us humans. So no robot interior decorators just yet then. But what about those slides where the AI designs a whole bedroom? From an empty room to a fully furnished space. And it even does it in different styles. Green, gray, blue. That's what's exciting. Imagine showing a client a bunch of options instantly. It could make interior design so much easier and less stressful for everyone. It's like, I want a minimalist cyberpunk bedroom. And bam, the AI just does it. No more searching through Pinterest for hours. And it's not just rooms either. We've got these screenshots from Skybox AI. And this is where it gets really wild. It makes images of whole environments, like a whole city, super futuristic looking. Oh, yeah. And you can be really specific too, right? Like telling it what you don't want, that negative text thing. Right. Imagine saying, I want a city, but no people and definitely no flying cars. And it just does it. Uh -uh. And then there's that Pix2 Pix, I think it's called, turns a simple layout into a real looking building. It's like magic almost. You take the basic drawing and it's a real building. It's like bridging the gap between an idea and actually seeing it. Imagine architects using that or city planners. It could change everything. And that's what gets me about all this. It's not just one thing. Design, photography, yeah. even those two photos, same living room. But one has that movie style lighting. Totally. It's like AI is enhancing things, taking something normal and making it dramatic, like having a whole lighting crew. But it's just the AI. Makes you wonder what it could do for like a whole movie set yeah, or a fashion shoot. The yeah. possibilities are kind of endless. And we haven't even touched on art yet. There's this one image, a sculpture, really intricate, just floating there. It really makes you think about what art even is now. That's what's so cool, right? It's not just about making things look good. It's pushing the boundaries, making you ask questions. It's speaking of pushing boundaries, let's talk about this Peeps group. They're the ones behind this presentation. They call themselves AI Whisperers. Yeah, they've got some crazy stuff on their website. AI art designs everything. They even have cool shiz is one of their specialties, I love that. You gotta appreciate their style, they get it, you know? It's not just about the techie stuff, it's about having fun with it, seeing what's possible, and that's exciting. It's true, you can feel that energy, get you fired up about the possibilities. Mm -hmm. But, I have to ask, with all this AI stuff, can it actually be creative? Or is it just good at copying what we do? That's the big question, isn't it? And this doozy presentation, they actually say something like, and I'm paraphrasing here because it gets a little colorful. Yeah. They basically say a bad idea is still a bad idea, even if an AI came up with it. I remember reading that and just laughing. They're not wrong. AI can give us all of these ideas, but we're still the ones who have to pick the good ones. Exactly. It's a tool, a really powerful tool, but it can't replace what we bring to the table, our own experiences, you know, our point of view. So what are we supposed to take away from all this? I say, 
think of it as this new thing in your creative toolbox. Don't mm -hmm. be afraid to try it out. See what happens. Yeah, don't be afraid to experiment. You might surprise yourself. Absolutely. But this has been quite a deep dive. Generative AI, who knew it was so much more than just some cool tech demos. It's really making us rethink a lot of things. Design, art, even just what it means to be creative. And that's what makes these deep dives so interesting. Thanks for joining us on this one. Until next time. It's been a pleasure as always.